Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul, I greet you today with Jesus joy, ready to continue walking through the 49 commands of Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Lana, your girl, your sister, your auntie, your niece, the minister, um, here to help reconcile your soul to Christ, um, because he reconciled mine, amen? And so today's commandment is command number 39, love this one. Love the Lord. Matthew 22 verses 37 and 38 says, and he said to him, you shall love the Lord. This is Jesus talking. Remember, these are his commands. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. Listen, love is not just this bubbly feeling or emotion that we deal with, but love is actually a choice. Amen. Um, the sovereign God that we that we serve um, loves us so much that he poured himself out. Amen. He poured himself out into flesh in the form of his son to die on a cross to give us the choice to choose to receive and reflect his love here in the earth. Free will is love. God gave us a choice. You know, um, domestic violence, one of the things about domestic violence where it, it is um, not love because Corinthians tells us, 1 Corinthians 13 tells us it's not prideful, it's not buff, puffed up, it doesn't hurt others. So, um, domestic violence is, 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 is proof because the Bible tells us that, you know, a man should love his wife as he loves himself. And we remember that marriage is a representation of Christ's love for the church. Amen. And so, um, loving God and having that free will to love domestic violence is forcing someone um to love them and to do their will but God says you know what I'm uh, listen I'm not abusive I'm a gentleman I give you the choice you can freely follow me you can freely deny yourself take up your cross and follow me or you can do what you want to do because he says no man can serve two masters. If God be God, then serve him. Amen. And if Baal be Baal, then serve him. But you aren't going to be able to do both because you will love one and hate the other. And so many times when we are... um. Um, in the world and we're doing the things of the world and we we bouncing back and forth between God and the world, we have to make a choice because one will supersede the other. And many times, unfortunately, with believers, we get drowned out by the world and we end up um, losing our footing and, and losing ourselves, amen, in the midst of the world because we chose to love the things of the world over the things of God. Listen, when you are in, for people who are in domestic, and I'm sorry to use this, but this is probably the best example I can use because the enemy is an abuser. He is a, an accuser of the brethren, amen, and he will do anything to bait you in and then snitch on you. Um, and so uh, I don't really like to use the analogy, but it's probably the best one that I can use because of its nature. And so God is not a bully. He doesn't force his love upon you. He doesn't force you to receive it. And he doesn't force you to give it back. Amen. Um, and so we have to be diligent that we are choosing to love God over the things of the world. Um, Deuteronomy 30 and 16 says, I command you today to love the Lord your God. I command you to follow him and obey his commands, laws, and rules. Then you will live and your nation will grow larger. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take for your own. Man, come on. We are standing on the precipice, we've been saying it, of God doing something great in this season and it is going to be our love for him and our love for him drives us to be, be obedient to him to follow his laws and to follow his commandments to seek his face and obey the rules amen and he says then when we do those things when we love the lord we cry out to him we pray we're being obedient we're doing those things it causes him to increase us why because when we're walking in that love we're able to win love to win others to him. 
and we build the kingdom, amen, when we're walking in that obedience, we're breaking chains and loosing shackles, and what are we doing? We are freeing people to from the bonds of, 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 of darkness, amen, to come into the kingdom of light, and, and he says he will bless us in the land that we're entering in. In this new season, we have to love the Lord with everything that we have, that there's no room for anything else, and when, when he says, you know, you're going to love him with all of your mind, your soul, your strength. That is every being and every part of you says, I love God. And because I love him, I walk in agreement with his word. Um, I follow his word. And no, I'm not perfect, but I do my best it, it, in surrendering to the spirit so that he can work in me both to will and do his good pleasure. Because there are some things that God wants me to do that I don't want to do, but his spirit in me gives me the will to do it, the, the desire and the hunger to do it. Why? Because I love him. Amen. Psalm, um, we started out this journey, right, with, with Deuteronomy, uh, um, um, not Deuteronomy, John 14, 15. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So out of love for the Father, um, out, of, out of love for the Father, our love, I'm sorry, for the Father is shown in our reverence toward him and our obedience toward the word and our submission to the Spirit. Psalm 31, verse 23 says, love the Lord, all of you who are his loyal friends followers. The Lord protects those who are loyal to him. He punishes those who brag about their own power, not in your own strength. By the grace of God, I am still here. He gives them all the punishment they deserve. He protects you. Listen, this scripture tells us that he protects his loyal followers, those who love him. Amen. And we are loyal to him because we love him. He protects us mentally. He guards our mind with the words. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 6 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Filled. Amen. Listen, he guards our minds. Amen. It is through the word of God. We don't wrestle. And so we have to tear down those imaginations. We have to tear all of those things when the enemy starts to come in and make us feel guilty and say, oh, you did that. God doesn't love you. Oh, you did that. God doesn't want you. Oh, no, 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 no. He says that, you know, that if I confess, he is faithful and just to forgive me my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. No, no, no. The word of God. So what do you mean? He doesn't want me. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, not whoever whosoever, whosoever is perfect, amen, believes in him shall have everlasting life. And I believe, Lord, so I, I know that you love me. And in response to your love for me, then my love back to you, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to walk. I'm going to guard my mind. Amen. Because I love you. He does that for you. He helps to do that. Um, he guards our spirits through the spirit. This is what the scripture in Psalms just told it. He said that he protects those that are loyal to him. I'm telling you how he, how he protects us. Amen. When we love him, he protects our minds. Amen. And then, um, uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Uh, of then first Corinthians two verses. Oh, this one is long. All right. He guards our spirits. Um, he says in first Corinthians two, this is kind of long one through 16. And I, brother, when, when I come to you, I came not with excellency. This is Paul speaking of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. He said, I ain't come with no fancy words to tell you about what I've been through and the good news of what Jesus did for me. Amen. He said, for I determined not to know anything. I Listen, I, I personally, in 
me, Paul, the person, have nothing to offer you except the fact that Jesus, um, uh, um, that Jesus saves and um, that he was crucified for you. Amen. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Listen, I didn't tell you my own knowledge, my own wisdom, but the spirit of God gave this to me to say why that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God that we don't rely on our own knowledge because human knowledge cannot comprehend the things of God. And we're going to get to that in this scripture in a second. So he says um, that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, that we, we, we don't stand believing in the word of man, but the word of God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes, princes of this world, that's the enemy, that come to naught. Um, the words of the world mean absolutely nothing. They are of no effect, but we know that God's word will not return to him void, but it will accomplish that which he sent it to do. He said, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even in the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Listen, the devil is not God's equal. He did not know the plan of God with Jesus Christ. Had they known the plan, they would not have crucified him and we would be in such a bad state right now. So thank God for the hidden mysteries that are not just hidden from us, but they're hidden from the enemy. Amen. And that as we search the word of God out, they're revealed to us that we might be a step ahead of him. Amen. So it says that, you know, if they would have known that these things that listen, they, they would not have crucified him. Um, but it is written, I have not seen, we know this one, right? Nor have ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, um, into the heart of man, the things which God have prepared for them that love him. The enemy don't know what God has planned for you. All he knows that God is a good God. He's a faithful God. He will withhold no good thing from you. And that's what he's trying to block. He don't care what it is. He just wants to block the goodness of God from those who love him. Amen. But we're not going to do that. We're going to fix our eyes and stay loving God that we don't miss out. He said, but God hath revealed them unto us. We know what he's going to do. And he revealed it to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. He guards our spirits by revealing to us the things that God has for us. He protects us. And as we read the word of God, it builds us up and it strengthens us. And he says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which by the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Stop fighting with people. People who do not know God, who do not have the spirit that are not open to hearing the word of God will never be able to understand the things of God. They are foreign to him because it is the spirit in us that reveals what the word of God means. It is a spirit that is within us, God's spirit that gives us the truth. It is that spirit that is in us that helps us to understand the love of God that we might be able to receive it and in, the, in turn reflect that love to other people. He said, but the spirit judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. 
for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he might instruct him for we have the mind of Christ. Amen. And so listen, we are to love the Lord. And as we love the Lord, we obey his commands. As we love the Lord, we are obedient. We are faithful. Um, the Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom um, and, and sharing that wisdom and walking in that fear of him. That fear is not a fear of being afraid or being scared, but it is a reverence towards God. Amen. That recognizes his ultimate authority and his omnipotent power. Amen. That it recognizes that he loves you so much. And in return, man, listen, when you know that somebody loves you, you do everything to love them back and you do every, you do anything for them. And how do I know? Because we've been in relationships with things that we've said, oh, I'll never do that. We found ourselves doing out of the fact that we felt that we love this person. Amen. And so if we can go against our morals and our values, we go against God. When we love other people, we compromise our spiritual self. Well, time out for that. This season, we're going to love God greater than anything else. Amen. Why? Because Psalm 116 and 1 says, love the Lord. Why do we love him? Because he have heard our voice and our supplications. Listen, God is hearing. He's responding. He's answering. He's moving. Listen, we love him. Why? Because he's doing all of those things. Not only the fact that he died on a cross, not only the fact that he redeemed me, not only the fact that he gave his only son, but he's still working on my behalf right now. So let's do what Joshua said to the people in Joshua 24, 23. Joshua says, so throw away your false gods that you have among you and love the Lord, the God of Israel with all your heart. Listen, anything that is in your life that is taking up space and um, uh, it taking up God's space and God's space is that any, what he's calling to you to do, it those things or those people are preventing or hindering you from doing that. Amen. They are in God's space. It's time to move people out of God's love space. Amen. And put God on the throne of your heart. Love him completely and love him with everything that you have. And you will find that will forgiveness will become easy. Healing will, will begin to commence in your heart and you will be able to um, deal emotionally and mentally with things that have been interrupting you from being able to function spiritually. Amen. Love covers a multitude of sin. I thank you guys so much for listening to me today. I pray that you have had an opportunity to get my book, um, the Possibilities of God, 21 Days of Faith, Devotional, Amen. It has been a blessing to many. You can get it on my website, faithedllc.com, um, along with checking out my blogs. You can go back and look at these videos on there, some other videos and blogs that I have, um, and also some other items that you can purchase, Amen, because everyone deserves the gift of faith, Amen. I love you so much. Hey, do what we do. One of you tag 49, 49 of you tag one hey what the heck everybody hit the share button let's get these commands out there so that we can walk pleasing to god and build his kingdom why iron sharpens iron if we can get these things out we can sharpen each other love one another build each other up and help endure one uh bear one another's burdens and endure to the end together amen i thank you again so much for listening i'm pastor lani and i just want to pray for you father in the name of jesus Jesus, we thank you and we bless you, God, for one more command, oh God. We thank you for your word that is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and dividing our spiritual man from our carnal man, oh God, and discerning our thoughts and the intents of our heart. Father, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that this word that you are teaching us be rooted and grounded in our hearts, oh God, that we might walk out these commands to love like you love Jesus, to do what you did, Jesus. Why? Because if we do that in the end, we know that we will hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. 
Father, we just want to love like you love and do what you do. We thank you and we bless you for choosing us, oh God. And we ask you now that as we absorb this word and walk it out, use us to your, uh, your glory, oh God, to advance your kingdom. We are your agents. We are your ambassadors and we are not afraid. Amen. We thank you and we bless you. Now, God, we ask that you would go before us to guide us, above us to bless us, behind us to perfect, protect us, and in us to keep us from falling. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a faith-filled day.